The real cause of death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who died on February the 16th in a penal colony located in the Yamalo Nenets Autonomous Okrug, was probably poisoning and not cardiac arrhythmia, as stated in the official version of the politician's death. The insider has obtained secret documents that show that information about the symptoms of poisoning that the opposition leader complained about before his death was removed from the decision to refuse to open a criminal case into Navalny's death. Thus, the initial version of the document reported that shortly before his death, the politician lying on the floor complained of acute pain in his abdomen. He began vomiting and having convulsions and then lost consciousness. Information about the oppositionist's condition was conveyed to the prison's medical workers. However, in the final version of the document, the fragment mentioning the above symptoms disappeared. The information received by journalists confirms the words of the oppositionist's wife, Yulia Navalnaya, who said that her husband complained of severe pain in his stomach immediately before his death. Navalny himself, while in the colony, told the defense about his suspicions that they were trying to poison him. Dr. Alexander Polupan, who took part in Navalny's treatment after he was poisoned with Novichok four years ago, commenting on the data presented by journalists, said that the listed symptoms among 100% indicate poisoning. The cause of death announced by the authorities does not match these symptoms. Sharp abdominal pain, vomiting and convulsions are not observed with arrhythmia. The specialist added, as previously reported, investigative journalist Risto Grozev stated back in March that the most likely cause of Navalny's death was poisoning. He noted that the Kremlin hid all evidence as much as possible and made it almost impossible to obtain blood samples in time after death. An investigative journalist suggested, I can say that there is data, although they are hiding more than before, because they themselves have learned after our previous investigations to do so as not to leave traces, but they still continue to make mistakes and therefore I am sure that we will find evidence. President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko has announced the country's red lines and threatened to use nuclear weapons if Belarus or Russia is attacked by NATO. Lukashenko thanked Russian leader Vladimir Putin for confirming the use of nuclear weapons in such a situation. If NATO attacks us, we will use nuclear weapons and Russia will support us, he stated. He mentioned that Americans and Poles are gathering along the border, especially with Poland. We know that the Polish leadership is already rubbing their hands in anticipation. He stated, Lukashenko stressed that the state border of Belarus is a red line. If we use nuclear weapons, we may be retaliated against, Russia in particular. Therefore, Russia will use its full arsenal and this could lead to a world war. The West doesn't want that and it isn't ready for it. But we are clear, the red line is the state border. If they cross it, our response will be immediate. We are preparing for this, he said. Besides, Belarusian companies may be linked to sanctioned Iranian arms manufacturing companies. Inform Napalm reported the information citing the activist group cyber.anarchy.squad. Volunteer analysts managed to obtain 700 gigabytes of data from the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and related legal entities. An initial analysis of these materials suggests potential collaboration between Belarusian companies and Iranian enterprises that have been sanctioned specifically in connection with the production of weapons from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, according to the statement. In May, the Belarusian concern Belneftekim participated in the Iran Oil Show International Exhibition, where several agreements were established between Belarusian and Iranian companies. Notably, Steklovo Lokno signed a memorandum with Iranian counterparts to supply silica materials valued at 200,000 euros. This fiber is believed to have potential military applications. Interestingly, there are no official mentions of the Iranian side represented by composite Albors available online. Analysts speculate that the name may have been intentionally altered in the documents 
to obscure illegal activities. There is a strong possibility that Belarusian companies are actually collaborating with Albor's Organic Materials Engineering Company, which was recently sanctioned by the US. Albor's Organic Materials Engineering Company is accused of supplying strategic materials used in the production of missiles and drones for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Volunteer analysts stress that there is reason to believe the Belarusian company is supplying silica materials to this specific firm, which is part of a network of suppliers to the Iranian military industry. If our suspicions are confirmed, Belarusian petrochemical companies are providing materials to the Iranian military sector, which manufactures missiles and drones. Iran, in turn, transfers these weapons to Russia, which employs them to attack Ukraine. This information leak underscores the critical need for international monitoring and control over the supply of strategic materials, the article states.